The excitement of playing Lynx War. Sigh. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Lynx War. Why am I here? <laughs> anyway, if you're unfamiliar with Fire Emblem 8, eventually we will be able to go through the world map as we see here and move along to find random encounters and the ability to grind, which I don't see is useful at all in a Fire Emblem game. Fuck me. Anyway, Zelda being the stupid idiot she is, decided to go along with Link, who's possibly most likely going to get himself killed with the useless amounts of assholes he has with him. Today we're going to meet characters from Fire Emblem 8 and characters from Legend of Zelda. Thankfully, our OC count is only at 1. At least if I remember correctly. Once we start getting double digits with the OCs, then I'll begin to cry. This chapter, though, we're introduced to our greatest friend and ally, though. For in this chapter, we get to meet Ross Epicbeard, insert last name here. Ross Epicbeard, insert name here, for now on shall be known as Epicbeard the Pirate, is or was one of my greatest units in the, my previous run of Fire Emblem Link's War. So much to the point that he went through an intergalactical dimensional porter. Well, what kind of sentence is that? He went through an intergalactic dimensional portal with a hand axe to kill an archer from halfway across the map. He is indeed, quite frankly, a badass. Which is why we will be recruiting and using him and replicating his badassery. And now that I've said this, I'm sure everyone is going to vote him out of the party the moment that we get the chance. Or you get the chance. I don't really have a choice in who I'm going to use after a while. Shit sucks. If you're unfamiliar with FE8, Ross was the one on the left when talking to Talon. If you don't know who Talon is, he appeared in Link's Awakening, The Minish Cap, and Ordering of Time. You should be playing those instead of watching this LP. Let me repeat that, you should be playing those instead of watching this LP. Because it's a terrible, terrible GAME! Anyway, Ross has been injured horribly to the point where nothing really is gonna happen, so I'm not really that worried about it because Ernesto pretty much saves him turn one. Plot development here is... Oh no, Ross is in trouble. Hurry, I must go rescue her. Oh no, bandits are attacking a village. Oh, lotta, 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 brr, 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 brr. Honestly, there's really nothing happening at this point besides dialogue that I don't really care about, so... I... It... The, the problem with Link's War is that they have these moments where it goes from pants on head retarded if you excuse me borrowing that quote to why am I here this is so boring it's generic and it was generic beforehand as well actually this does bring up a point earlier with the vassals promoting to uh, Zelda and Link I can understand why they would um, consider Zelda the leader since you know she's a fucking princess but I don't see why Link at all would be honored or respected in this timeline at least because he hasn't done anything I haven't seen I haven't heard anything of him slaying Ganon oh shit oh were you in the original FE8 Selena yo you're Seldor door Seldor no I think he was part of the original FE8 Noel was it my memory's a little slippy I remember him also being one of the few uh, shaman users I'm not the only shaman user in FE8 for better or for worse, that has changed because loot was changed into a shaman user in this game. But the problem is, is that there's no anima users now. I can't really express how stupid it is to not give you anima users at all. 
technically I could still roll and try to get uh, one of the clerics or even loot herself into Sage position early on, but then I'd be wasting the levels if I promoted them too early. Either way, I'm um, boned, if you will, in trying to get a trying to get a Excalibur to work or Excalibur Air or whatever it really is. It's been a while since I've played Effie, whatever. Yes, I know it's been in most of the FE games, but I am more than brain dead right now as we speak because I am playing Link's War. Talon proves that he is fairly badass despite his original character in FE8 being fairly mediocre. I don't know. He is one of the units I used in my previous run, but that's because warriors and bow users in general were pretty hard to find, and believe it or not, you only get one bow user. I think you only get one bow user in FE8 too. Or no, you get two. I think one of them was a Jagan. It's been a while. You'll have to forgive me. My memory is completely shot. Ross, epic beard, the fucking pirate asshole. No. Sadly, we won't be able to see uh, epic beard for a long time. At least at the rate leveling up that it's been going. But eventually we will get to Ross Epic Beard, and hopefully that will be before I lose control of him because some dipshit OC is voted in just for the lols. Uh, my head is gonna kill me before the end of this just for intelligence loss. Since we're here, I might as well mention some changes as well. Clark. Uh, cleric, if you haven't realized it, and or brain dead, ha is now able to attack offensively with a fire rod, which is something he was given in this game. How I feel about fire rods? It makes them useful and easier to level up, of course. The problem is, is that perhaps it is a bit too broken for clerics to be leveling up like their balls to the wall insane. Either way, it it's really. Nah, I don't really have a positive or negative opinion on it. Oh wow, wait, Link Swore just got a neutral reaction out of me. <gasps> now I'm just shocked and amazed. Meh. If you notice here, Link only is able to single a normal bandit at the beginning of the game. Now, this worries me a little bit because in my original game, Link was R or blessed in RNG to speed. And that really was the only redeeming value for him for a good bit of the game. His speed just being off the wall. Critical! Insane, if you will. If he doesn't get blessed in RNG, or he doesn't get blessed in speed or strength, like, you know, he should be, he's gonna be useless. That's not a joke. He's gonna be useless. At least until he's promoted, and hopefully we'll get to that soon, because his promotion does give him really, really good stat growth, but that doesn't mean anything if luck just bones me over, if you know. Then again, that's the same for any Fire Emblem character, if you will. The epic story of us trying to find Ryan after his capture from the destructive, evil, dark-armored Evoid Empire will continue on in such an epic manner which my eyes can only wish to grace upon the beautiful oh, who the hell am I kidding I can't say it enough times how much I hate this story it, it fails on not just a basic writing level it fails on basically every fundamental level of writing even typos are present later on but it it's it's bad as you can see, Clark just utterly destroyed that bandit and got some mad EXP, which... Meh, good or bad, you, you decide, you will, you know. Link is going to actually double before we end this, which I'm really, really glad about, because it shows that, you know, maybe he'll actually get, get enough speed to take on enemies, but he doesn't double anyone else this whole chapter. I hope he starts doubling. Like, he needs speed. He really needs speed, like I said. That is what I'm mostly worried about now. Speed and strength for Link. 
Otherwise, he just dodges everything and gets out of the way. Anyway, end of part one. <laughs>